Welcome to Downtown Sports, my name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, I don't normally get into gossip or drama, but I thought that this quote on Twitter from Brian Burke was pretty interesting here, because it's pretty clear who he's talking about. So Brian Burke was on the Fan 590 talking about Matt Barzal and his contract situation here, and don't worry, it's all related to the Toronto Maple Leafs, because of course it is. It's just... When even when the Leafs don't make it about them, other people make it about them. Which, okay, I don't really care about the first part of that quote, but Lou is really tough to deal with, but fair. Lou's attitude is like mine. I'm not paying for an idiot GM's mistake, and that's Lou's attitude. I'll pay you what's fair, not mistake money. Does so anyone want to try to take a guess who he's talking about here? I don't think it's too difficult to figure out, and... I understand why Brian Burke is saying this on Toronto radio, nonetheless. He, he has a book to sell. Brian, I'll do you a favor. I'll leave the link to your book in the description of this video if anyone wants to check that out. Brian, you don't need to say stuff like this to sell your book. There's lots of good stories on there on its own. And Brian, if I'm taking a couple of pot shots at you, you're a lawyer. Free advertising is free advertising whether you need it or not. But if you're an Islanders fan watching this video, I did take down the John Tavares jerseys that were hanging up in the background, so you don't have to worry about seeing those. But stick around later in the video because I am going to be talking about Matt Barzal's contract situation in depth and why they might be at a standstill right now. And if you're not an Islanders fan and you're asking yourself, why should I care about the Matt Barzell contract situation? Well, if you're a fan of a team who has a major RFA who's due for a contract extension either right now or next season... Everything that I'm talking about in regards to Mad Barzal is going to be applicable to them when they're negotiating their contract. And I'm not saying that Mitch Marner is not overpaid. I maintained while the contract negotiations were still going on, and I believe those videos are still up on my channel, that $9.5 million by either six, seven, or eight years would have been a fair deal for both parties. And when comparing the two players, Mitch Marner and Matt Barzal, when you're just looking at the raw points, they stack up pretty close to each other, and they're even closer when you look at the even strength points. These are two very similar players. So obviously, two similar players skill-wise should have two similar contracts, right? On EvolvingHockey.com, if we're looking at the advanced analytics for these players over the last three seasons, Matt Barzal edges out Mitch Marner in terms of expected goals above replacement ever so slightly. But if we take a look at the last two seasons, it narrows that gap even further, and these players are pretty much identical, except for Mitch Marner plays on the penalty kill and Matt Barzal doesn't. And before you rush to the comment section to say technically Matt Barzal does play on the penalty kill, I know it because I've seen it once, six minutes and 150 games doesn't count as playing on the penalty kill. If we go a little bit deeper with the advanced analytics over the last two seasons, because I think the last two seasons in comparing these two players are especially interesting, because Matt Barzal's rookie year, the 2017-2018 season, is not included in here, and that was John Tavares' last season with the New York Islanders, and these last two seasons for Matt Barzal are without John Tavares, and these last two seasons for Mitch Marner are with John Tavares. Islanders fans, if you're still watching at this point in the video, I want you to pay close attention to the wording that I use here. Matt Barzal plays a lot more shifts in the offensive zone against weaker competition than what Mitch Marner does. Mitch Marner has been the better player over the last two seasons, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Mitch Marner is better. All that means is that Mitch Marner has been given more responsibility over the last two seasons and has produced at about the same or a little bit better than Matt Barzal has. And if we take a look at Mitch Marner's 2018-2019 season, the year that earned him that large contract that he's currently on right now, yeah, he took on a lot of responsibility and was really, really good that season. And even if we just look at Matt Barzal's most recent season compared to Mitch Marner's 2018-19 season, these would be the contract years for both of these players it's still not much closer when you're looking at the context. So I don't think it's necessarily fair for Burke to make that comment in regards to Kyle Dubas or Mitch Marner because Matt Barzal and Mitch Marner are similar players, but Mitch Marner has been the better player so far. Basically, even if Marner wasn't overpaid and he was paid fairly, Matt Barzal still wouldn't be worth just as much as him. He would still be getting less. Now, in regards to the New York Islanders' cap situation with Johnny Boychuk going on LTIR when the season starts, because remember, there is no LTIR in the offseason, you're just allowed to exceed the cap by 10%. The New York Islanders should have enough cap space to give Matt Barzal a long-term deal, either six, seven, or eight years. But remember, it's not just about having the cap space and being cap compliant. A lot of teams are working with internal salary caps for the next couple of seasons. So while they might have space under the cap, they have to have the actual dollars to back it up. 
This is the deal that Alex Petrangelo signed this offseason, and the theme with how this deal is structured is present across all the big-name players that were signed, whether they're UFAs or RFAs. Players don't want front-loaded deals. They want back-loaded deals. And the idea behind that is that the escrow or the money that the players owe the league in regards to the revenue sharing is very, very high right now. And if you can structure your contract like this and get a couple more million dollars to take home with you, I mean, all the power to you. And I can understand the perspective from Matt Barzell. He doesn't want to lock himself into a long-term contract right now because he wants to bet on himself, especially when the market is so low. And teams might be a little bit reluctant to hand out large long-term deals because they're not really sure how the financials project three, four, or five years from now. So if Barzal and the Islanders can't get a long-term deal done because of those variables and the situation that the NHL is in right now and the world is in right now, well, then they might have to opt for a shorter term deal. And there's lots of comparables to pick from. I mean, this is Braden Point's three-year deal that he signed last offseason. This is Alex DeBrinkett's three-year deal that he signed. This is Matthew Chichuk's three-year deal. This is Brock Besser's three-year deal. You can't really backload a three- or a four-year contract because a player's salary is only allowed to vary so much from year to year. So if they can't backload a short-term contract and they can't work out a number that works for both parties on a longer-term deal, you can understand why the negotiations have taken this long so far. Now, they still have a lot of time between this year and next year, and they could move money out to be able to afford something, but it's looking more and more like Matt Barzal might just sign a one- or a two-year deal like Patrick Laine did last year. Barzal signing a one- or a two-year deal would be for different reasons than what Laine did because the Winnipeg Jets don't really see him as part of their future, and Matt Barzal is the future of the New York Islanders, but there is a comparable contract there. But if it ends up being shorter than three or four years, then I would expect the cap hit to be on the higher end because then you can't backload anything and Matt Barzal is going to be subject to a lot of escrow on that contract. If Matt Barzal is asking for a lot of money, it has nothing to do with him using high-end comparable contracts like Mitch Marner's. It has nothing to do with the Toronto Maple Leafs or Kyle Dubas. It has everything to do with escrow and the money situation that the NHL is in right now. But boring doesn't sell books or play well on the radio, so when in doubt, make it about the Toronto Maple Leafs. So make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember, like I said in the previous clip, when in doubt, make it about the Toronto Maple Leafs because people will pay attention. And if you're not a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs or you don't like them getting more media attention, we didn't ask for this.